the death of Ariel Sharon, Israel's former prime minister and legendary war hero is a major historical event. It is an ominous prophetic and biblical warning of calamitous events coming for the nation of Israel. Among the most controversial figures in the history of Israel, Ariel Sharon's life was an amazing parallel to his nation's own short but turbulent history. Incredibly, the remarkable circumstances of Ariel Sharon's death on the January 11, 2014 after laying in a vegetative coma for eight years were actually foretold in amazing detail in God's Word over 2,000 years before. We implore you to read the following information that graphically details Ariel Sharon's truly remarkable life and the stunning significance of his recent passing and what it means for God's people Israel and the whole world. Ariel Sharon A man of sign, the true king of Israel cometh. The history Over his long career Sharon, was a man of destiny. Rising from an infantry officer in Israel's 1948 War of Independence, he rose to the highest office in the land when he was elected Israel's 11th Prime Minister in 2001. His life was a litany of epic military conquests, fighting in all four of Israel's major wars, he quickly rose to the rank of general in the Israeli army. Later Ariel Sharon's transition into political life was marked by controversy and seismic contradictions. Reviled by Arabs over his hardline policies and viewed with a mixture of respect and suspicion by many Israelis, Sharon became a lightning rod for controversy, all centered around the question of the final status of Jerusalem and the Holy Land, Israel. Born in Palestine, as it was then known, in 1928, he began his career as a platoon commander in the Israeli military at the outset of the 1948 War of Independence, during which time he was critically wounded and left for dead. As a commander he later fought with distinction in the 1956 CA War against Egypt. In the 1967 Six-Day War as a major general, he headed Israel's most powerful armored division the 10th Battalion, leading a crushing victory over the Egyptians. In the 1973 Yom Kippur War, Ariel Sharon's bold maneuver, while defying orders, in crossing the Suez Canal and encircling the Egyptian Third Army was considered the key to Israel's victory. It led to the Israeli public giving him the nickname the King of Israel and the Lion of God. Following this decisive victory against overwhelming odds, Crowds swarmed the streets singing a revised Hebrew song called David King of Israel and changed it to Ariel King of Israel. During the 1970s and 1980s as Secretary for Agriculture, Ariel Sharon became known as the father of the settlements movement as he actively encouraged and directed the building of Jewish settlements on the West Bank. Eventually he became the head of the Likud party and later in 2001 he was elected Prime Minister of Israel. In 2002, Ariel Sharon controversially ordered the construction of the security barrier an 18 feet high combination of concrete wall and chain fence that snakes through the West Bank, foretold 2000 YRS ago. Because, even because they have seduced my people. saying peace and there was no peace and one built up a wall and lo others daubed it with untempered mortar Ezekiel 13 v 10. Sharon promised peace. Sharon built a wall. Verse 13 tells us the wall will be destroyed by God. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with you in tempered mortar and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with you in tempered mortar and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. Ezekiel 13 v 30 to 15. 
incredibly these verses above, clearly describe future events all foretold in Bible prophecy. Ariel Sharon was instrumental in securing the whole land of Israel. His conquests in 1967 and 1973 ensured Israel's survival in the land given to them by God. Given his extraordinary exploits, it is clear God was undoubtedly with him in these victories. But in his old age Ariel Sharon trod a different path. In 2003 he promised to create a Palestinian state. September 2005 Sharon abandons God's promises. In 2005 as Israel's Prime Minister, Ariel Sharon caused a national and religious crisis over his Gaza withdrawal plan. He instigated a seismic shift in Israeli policy, having resolved to enforce the unilateral withdrawal of all Jewish settlers and Israeli troops from the disputed Gaza Strip and part of the West Bank. This decision and its execution caused a furor domestically shaking Israel's Orthodox Jewish community to its foundations. Never before had an Israeli government relinquished what the religious population universally regarded as holy land promised to the Jews by God. For the first time since the Jewish state was founded, Israel had voluntarily uprooted its own people and ceded land to the Palestinians. It was a turning point for the Zionist project. So who was the man behind this withdrawal? The Lion of God Ariel Sharon What a stunning turnaround! Sharon, who had led Israel to such amazing victories, was now withdrawing from the land, promised to Israel by God himself. Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. We may ask if Gaza is part of the land that God had promised. We are told clearly in Exodus 23 v 31. I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and thou shalt drive them out before thee. The Sea of the Philistines equals Gaza. The area of the ancient Philistines was included in the land. But in Org forward slash September 2005 Sharon sent in soldiers who physically pulled Jews out of the land, and parts of the West Bank. The picture above shows soldiers weeping as they removed their own people. As Exodus 23 says, it was God who drove out the inhabitants of the land. But now here was an Israeli leader the first in history to give away voluntarily. Land given to the Jews by God. Ought ye not to know, that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David. Forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt. 2 Crow 13 v 5 Ariel Sharon should have known this but it was about to get worse. November 2005 Ariel Sharon plots the final shape of Israel. Sixty years after the state of Israel was created, Ariel Sharon who as a military general in successive wars since 1948 played a leading role in the expansion of Israel's borders, now as a politician was finalizing plans to further divide the land and set the country's elastic frontiers in stone. With the withdrawal of Gaza complete, Sharon planned to complete the process by finally dividing the land of Israel in two. This is where it gets interesting, all this recorded in the UK's Daily Telegraph, at about 3pm on January 4, 2006 a man called Otiel Skeller was ushered into Ariel Sharon's office. He was a senior cartographer known as the map maker. He had the final plans for the future borders of Israel. The plans detailed the withdrawal this time not of Gaza, but of the vast majority of the West Bank and some parts of the Holy City, Jerusalem. 
The meeting lasted one and a half hours at the end of it, Sharon agreed the map would form the basis of Israel's disengagement from the West Bank and the creation of a Palestinian state. Two hours later Sharon suffered a massive stroke and went into a coma. Is this coincidence? The Rabbi, the Note and the Messiah In 2005, while Ariel Sharon was at the height of his power and busy withdrawing from Gaza, Israel's most loved and venerated rabbi pronounced that the Messiah would not come until after the death of Ariel Sharon. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri wrote a cryptic note in September 2005 that he requested should only be opened one year after his own death. One year is the traditional mourning period, during which certain privileges are accorded the family out of respect for the deceased. More importantly, condemnation of actions of the dead cannot be placed on the family after this time period, so Kaduri was likely protecting his family from the backlash he thought may come from his note. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri died just 24 days after Sharon's stroke in 2006 at the age of 108. Over 300,000 people attended his funeral. By the time Kaduri's note was opened on January 28, 2007, Ariel Sharon had been in a coma for over 12 months. In the note he had left, Rabbi Kaduri had revealed that the true Messiah was in fact Jesus. Yehoshua or Yeshua. All this was reported in Israel Today, April 7, 2007. Now, eight years later and following the recent death of Ariel Sharon, many in Israel and around the world are asking whether the Messiah will come soon. Ariel. In Bible prophesy. Ariel is a name that means Jerusalem. Ariel is mentioned in this context in only one chapter in the entire Bible. Isaiah 29 speaks of Ariel being the city where David lived. It speaks prophetically of Jerusalem being brought down to the ground and leveled. But amazingly, this ancient Bible passage also speaks of the leaders falling into a deep sleep. This condition will be the catalyst for the terrible time of trouble soon to befall not just Jerusalem and Israel, but will also engulf all nations culminating in God's righteous judgments on mankind. So we can see the remarkable circumstances of Ariel Sharon's personal demise, all foretold over 2,500 years ago in God's Word, unmistakably foreshadow global events soon to unfold. A warning of coming global judgment. We also know one scriptural precedent for a significant death before worldwide judgment. There has only ever been one worldwide judgment before. The next one is coming soon. The first one was at the time of the flood. Just before the flood came, a man died whose name was Methuselah. His name means his death shall bring judgment. He definitely died in the year of the Great Flood and just before the Flood came. His own name spelt out judgment was coming and served as a warning of impending judgment to those around him. Given the remarkable circumstances of his life and his death, Ariel Sharon might be a similar person. His own name predicts what is coming. Judgment concerning Jerusalem namely the leveling of Jerusalem. Sharon who led Israel to capture and expand the land, also became the leader who gave some of it away and tried to divide it in two. He has recently died at the very time the world is pushing for division again in 2014 as us led peace negotiations near their conclusion and we see Israel edging closer to a final deal to trade holy land for the false promise of peace. So, is all this pure chance? Or is God's hand behind these things? You decide. The world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. God is patient toward you, 
not wishing for any to perish but for all to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3 v 6 to 7 Ariel Sharon's life and the astonishing circumstances and timing of his recent death are a prophetic sign. Warning of approaching catastrophic global events that will precede the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our heads up from above. Our opportunity to prepare is now.